I always love to find fan servicey games that make me weirded out or uncomfortable. I always seem to find something new to top the last one I played and how far and weird they can go for that discomfort. That trend doesn't disappoint with what we're going into today. A dating and life management sort of sim that features not anime drawn characters but real Japanese actors. Buckle up as we're in for a strange ride with discomfort all the way from the weird and creepy blinking eyes on the title screen. Here is my review of Summer Sweetheart for the Nintendo Switch. The story here is about you, the protag. You live in an apartment complex and have a strange encounter with one of two girls, Natsumi and Miyu. In Natsumi's route, you find her drunk outside and take her to your apartment to recover. Whereas in Miyu's route, you meet the landlord's daughter that is convinced she is a cat and you are her master. You go on a tale going about your everyday life with one of them around, interacting in the apartment along with meeting many other girls in town, all coming back to getting to know and dating them. Now is this story good? No, it's, it's definitely not. It is one awkward event after another no matter whose route you choose. Now some of the other girls events are a bit better written than Natsumi and Miyu, but it's all on a funny little here's this anime trope moment and that's about it. And this is intensified by the really lackluster English translation. This game feels like a project where they threw the script into Google Translate and just threw it into the game's files. There are consistent errors in words, punctuation, and outright false translations in dialogue. You can understand if you read it, but it's easily one of the worst translation jobs I've ever encountered. When it comes to gameplay, this is kind of a dating sim combined with a life management sim. As you check through each day, you'll do different tasks like working a job, visiting a place, or going on a date with your favorite girl. First of all, let's get the main gameplay loop down. Every day, you choose what you can do from the main menu of the daily schedule, phone, and saving your progress. The daily schedule lets you have energy reserves and doing a few tasks and activities during the day from a job to going on a date. Meanwhile, the phone lets you call a girl to schedule a date, respond or get text messages on the Like app, buy and equip costumes for the girls to wear both in-game and from the DLC, and view collection to re-watch unlocked events. Schedule is what you're going to be doing the most. Basically, you have energy and money reserves along with activities you can do that will use up one or both. You've got jobs to earn money, strolls to go into town and get character events, resting for recovering energy, and activities for increasing your stats in order to get through minigames during character events and past checks for main story events that require you to have a certain amount of looks or knowledge on art or culture. The system actually has a decent amount to it. There's a lot of management of doing activities to improve while also making sure you never run out of money or energy. These are also built into the dating system. Going on a stroll during the day will let you meet the different heroines, all of which you can gain the affection of. You raise that affection by going through dialogue choices on the strolling events or saving up money and calling them during the day to go on a date. I like the management side of this, but it really falls apart with the simplicity. Now, as I just said, you have dialogue choices during the strolling events to increase affinity points. And I figured I would have to have them like me before they would go on a date, right? Wrong. Any girl will accept a date to any location as long as you've got the money to chuck out as the dates are really just more extensive character events with more dialogue choices. Whether I was calling a Yumi with maxed out affection or someone I had literally just met that day, they will never refuse a date offer. But let's get back to main progression to talk about what makes this game really uncomfortable. You get normal character events on the strolls where the character's art is posing, showing the live actor in a VN cutscene. But Natsumi and Miyu have special main story events that come up constantly and what you get from them isn't a visual novel scene, but a live action video clip of the actress playing out the cliche scene. From Natsumi shaving your non-existent beard and asking if she is a capable woman because she shaved your beard for you, to me scratching and meowing at you the moment you meet, there is a lot of really weird and discomfort attached to these scenes. The way these scenes are portrayed make it really uncomfortable. You can tell all of these scenes are just there to be depthless. Here's this part of the I want a submissive and cute Japanese girlfriend fantasy. 
And it's kind of unfortunate because if you look back at games like Root Letter Last Answer, you can make live action work well in a visual novel, but not when it's clearly just throwing out weird cliche anime fantasy stuff. Now the other girls do have a few of these as well as you get to know them, but a lot of them are very, hmm, as you unlock costumes and get stuff like Chihiro in a nurse outfit telling you how badly you need that sexy nurse. But the mechanics around these events isn't really that bad. It's tied to your stats you can improve during your daily schedule. Each of these special events will require a stat to be a certain amount or it'll be skipped and not unlocked for you. This basically forces you to learn to be efficient with the daily schedule system and be balanced with what you're doing. And I kind of found this a bit fun with the bite-sized gameplay of figuring out different tasks for different stats, and they even threw in some fun little nods in the events to things like minigames to having one task literally just be playing a Nintendo Switch. But the mechanics really overstay their welcome. This is a very simple little game, but it's not short. Getting the first bar or two of a girl's intimacy gauge is pretty quick, but the game easily goes through an entire year of time, and you will have to start grinding a lot of repetitive events to get those gauges up. And the thing that really makes this grinding not very fun is that strolling events are limited. Each girl only has about three or four different events across the entire game, so if you're doing hundreds of these to get the, those gauges up, you are just doing the same three or four events over and over again with no change to dialogue choices. You can't change this up by dating in different places or what I think the game really wants you to do, and that's be an unfaithful person and date everyone at the same time. The game will even tell you in the tutorial that you can date four girls on the same day. So maybe my exhaustion from playing the game came more from trying to just dedicate the pro tag to one girl instead of all of them all at once. Speaking of that, let's dive into content and link. If you want to actually see the ending of this game, you will not be doing this bite-sized stuff for only a few hours. It's going to be more like 10, 15, and even 20 or more. And this goes to the fact that there are over half a dozen heroines that you can raise affinity for, but the ones that aren't Natsumi or Miyu aren't really the heroines. If you get to the end of the game without maxing out Miyu or Natsumi's affection gauge, it doesn't matter how much a Yumi likes you, you're going to get a bad ending and be thrust right into New Game Plus with everything intact to try again. Next up is presentation. I think the game looks just fine. You get a good amount of visual fidelity for the renders of the VN cutscenes, and the quality of the live action videos is pretty good. And when it comes to performance, I have no complaints about docked mode, though there is a really weird delay and lag with the live action video scenes in handheld mode that seem consistent across pretty much all of them. It's not a huge issue, but noticeable. And with that, let's go into battery life. On the original model, Summer Sweetheart gets a range of 2 hours and 48 up to 3 hours and 17. The Nintendo Switch Lite gets a range of 2 hours and 55 up to 3 hours and 24. The Red Boxer V2 2019 model gets a range of 6 hours and 2 up to 6 hours and 49. And the OLED model gets a range of 6 hours and 15 up to 7 hours and 13. In conclusion, Summer Sweetheart is a weird mix between a life sim and dating sim, offering a decent management and stat mechanic with some uncomfortable live action sequences. Now some parts of the game are decently done, but the list of the game's faults is big. The bad translation, uncomfortable feeling of the live action scenes, lag in handheld mode, repetition, lack of unique content for how long it is, and the list goes on. If you want this kind of extreme fan service stuff and don't mind it being a mindless pick up and play with a lot of repeated events, it's certainly playable for what it is. But I would not say it is good in any way, shape, or form. Reviews to Go rates Summer Sweetheart for the Nintendo Switch a 3 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.